Hello and welcome. My name is Sunshine, the project manager, Sunshine Resources. In this video, I'm going to show you how to produce high quality toilet soap, bath soap, and medicated soap. This video is also aimed at teaching you how to do quality control check on your toilet soap, bath soap, and medicated soap production. You can also use this skill from this video to improve the quality of your soap production. Well, I have already done a video that will show you how to mix the chemicals. Um, the, the thumbnail of the video you're watching on the screen right now is the video that I have done that will teach you how to mix the chemicals involved in the making of toilet soap, bath soap and medicated soap. And in that video, that is this video, the thumbnail of the video you're watching on the screen right now, I talked about using the hydrometer to check the quantity of caustic so that you'd need to produce a good toilet soap, medicated soap or bar soap. Well, the report reaching me says that most people are finding it difficult to use the hydrometer to do the check, especially the non-scientists. Um, they find it difficult to really use the hydrometer to determine the quantity of caustic soda needed to react with specific amounts of uh, oil. Well, in this particular video, I'm going to show you a much better way to improve the quality of your soap, especially those who want to go into soap making professionally. If you want to go into commercial production of soap, such as toilet soap, bar soap or medicated soap, I'm going to show you a much better and easier way to check the quality of your soap. Now, any soap manufacturer want to produce good quality soap for her customers and even if you're not doing it for commercial purposes even if it's for personal use or home use or domestic use it should be your priority to produce high quality soap for your domestic use so now the first question is that how do you determine a good quality soap yes that is the question we're going to ask her now how do you determine a good quality soap now let's answer this question by painting out the structure of a good quality soap now, as we all know, if you've been following us on our channel, especially in my videos on how to make toilet soap, bar soap and medicated soap, there are two very important materials needed to produce toilet soap, bar soap and medicated soap. And these are oil and caustic soda. At this juncture, I'd like you to know that caustic soda sometimes can be referred to as lye. Now, lye is a solution of caustic soda. So in this video, I'm going to use caustic soda. I'm going to use the name caustic soda and lye. Um, I'm going to use them interchangeably because lye is a solution of caustic soda. Okay. So just like I said earlier, in the making of bar soap, toilet soap, medicated soap, you need two very important materials. These are caustic soda and oil. Now the oil can be palm oil, coconut oil, palm canine oil, olive oil, shea butter oil, any other oil, any kind of oil that you want, you can use it to make your bar soap, toilet soap and medicated soap. Now other ingredients that we add to bar soap, toilet soap or medicated soap are just additives. In other words, caustic soda and oil can give us the soap that we want. So the borax, the kaolin, the sodium silicate, all these ones are additives. You may not even need them, whether you add them or you don't add them. The two components that you combine to form your soap is oil and caustic soda. So all other ones are called additives. So now let's go back to the first question that I ask. How do you determine a good quality soap? So let's paint the structure of a good quality soap. Let's look at it from this reaction, which we called reaction A. Reaction A, two units of oil react or combine with two units of caustic soda to give a good quality soap. What we are trying to do now is to paint the structure of a good quality soap. How do you identify a good quality soap? Now let's so let's see what makes it good. Now one unit of oil, the oil is represented by the blue bar, blue strokes, while the caustic soda is represented by the red strokes. So let's see. One unit of oil combined with one unit of caustic soda, CS, to form one unit of soap. Another unit of oil combined with 
another unit of caustic soda CS to form a unit of soap. Now, let's observe this combination or this reaction. You will notice that all the caustic soda has been consumed by the oil, such that at the end of the day, you will notice that no reactant is left behind in the reactor. All the caustic soda has been consumed by the oil. So none of the caustic soda unit is left behind. This is a good quality soap because no caustic soda is left behind. Very important. So what is the quality of a good soap now? All the caustic soda has been consumed. Okay, so how do we determine a bad quality soap? Let's look at the reaction B that we have below. Case B, for example, let's say case B. Two units of oil combined with three units of caustic soda. So let's see why it will give us a bad soap. Let's see why it is going to give us a bad quality soap. One unit of oil combined with another unit of caustic soda to give a unit of soap. Another unit of oil combined with another unit of caustic soda, CS, to form a unit of soap. At the end of the day, you will notice that one unit of caustic soda is left behind in the reactor and this will also mix with the soap. Now, this one unit of caustic soda that is left behind can cause skin irritation, it can cause itching or any other skin problem. This is an example of a bad quality soap. So how do you define a bad quality soap? A bad quality soap is a soap whose caustic soda was not completely consumed in the reaction or during the formation of the soap. In other words, we refer to it as excess caustic soda left behind. Now this is what every soap manufacturer wants to avoid. That is making sure that no excess of caustic soda is left behind in the soap. Instead of having excess caustic soda, it is even better to have excess of oil left in the soap. Now take for example, that will take us to case C or reaction C. Take for example, we have three units of oil reacting with two units of caustic soda. Now let's see how the combination takes place. One unit of oil combined with one unit of caustic soda to form one unit of soap. Another unit of oil combined with another unit of caustic soda to form one unit of soap. At the end of the day, you will notice that one unit of oil is left behind. Now, this one unit of oil, which is also referred to as the excess oil, can be called super fat. Excess oil in a soap can make the soap a good moisturizer. So the soap formed in this case C or reaction C is a good soap. However, when the oil becomes too much in the soap, the toilet soap, the bar soap or the medicated soap may become too soft. And that is also another problem. So as a soap producer, you will want to keep a standard in which there will be no excess caustic soda in your soap. And if there is excess oil, then it should be within a range that do not make the soap too soft for the user. Now, in order to be able to do this, perfectly, we will use what is called a lye calculator. Remember I told you earlier that lye means solution of caustic soda. The lye calculator will give you exactly the specific amount of oil needed to combine with a specific amount of caustic soda that will give you a good quality soap. Now every soap manufacturer needs to know this to be able to produce good quality soap. At this juncture, I would like to introduce you to the lye calculator. Now to access lye calculator, Open your web browser and type into the web browser thesage.com. Just type into the web browser thesage.com. Alright, now we are on to the home page of the light calculator. I'm going to show you how to use this light calculator to calculate the amount of materials needed for your soap production. Now we're going to use this light calculator to calculate the recipe, the amount of recipe that we need each time you want to produce your soap. Um, it's very important that you come here to find out the amount of recipe in terms of oil and caustic soda that you need for every particular production you want to make. Alright, 
I'm going to show you how to use the light calculator now. Now you will notice that there are so many fields as you scroll down to see the light calculator. But let's start from the top field. Now for every production you want to make, you will want to give your production maybe a title. For example, um, at the top you have the recipe title. What do you call, what do you want to call the recipe title? For example, this one, I can call it sunshine soup. Okay, I'm calling it sun, sunshine soup. Um, the next field after that one is created by, it's optional if you want, you can leave the fields vacant, but created by sunshine. Okay, that's my own. Now, the next field is the measurement, unit of measurement. As you can see here, we have different unit of measurement, ounces, pounds, and grams. Ounces, pounds, and gram. For me, I will go with gram. You can see, you can select any one you want, just selecting the radio buttons. You have the ounces, you have the pounds, you have the gram. I will go with the gram. We use grams as our metric unit. Let me go with gram. The next field after that one is your lie. Lie here are in two categories, okay? You can pick sodium hydroxide, which is by default, the one we have here. And you also have potassium hydroxide. Now, potassium hydroxide is most of the time used for liquid soap. If you want to produce liquid soap, you can pick potassium hydroxide. But if you want to produce bar soap, toilet soap, and medicated soap, then you go with the sodium hydroxide. Okay, you will also notice that the you also have sodium and potassium hydroxide blend written as sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide blend. Now, if you want to make um, liquid soap that, that will look so creamy, you want to produce a very creamy liquid soap, then you can pick this third button. If you want to produce liquid soap, most of the time you see those liquids so that look so creamy. They combine sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. That's what makes it look so creamy. So if you want to go with sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide blend, that means you are going for a creamy liquid soap. So, but here we are choosing sodium hydroxide. Now, the next thing after that field is um, choice of liquid. Choice of liquid, of course, water which is the universal solvent water um i don't think there's any other liquid you can use x well depending on what kind of soap you want to use but most of the time water is the universal solvent we use for soap then after that you now go down um ignore the fillers fragrances and notes just go down to the oils oils here we have a very large array of oil okay now let me show you how to fill this space now you can use one kind of oil or variety of oil when you are making bar soap when you're making sorry toilet soap and medicated soap most of the time if you are making bar soap it's advisable for you to use palm kernel oil okay but if you are making toilet soap and medicated soap it's advisable that you use a variety of oil. It gives your soap a very um, beautiful appearance, okay? So if you are using, depending on the kind of oil you're using, supposing I want to use, I want to use palm kernel oil. Maybe I want to use a total of 1,000 gram of oil, a total of 1,000 gram of oil. But out of the 1,000 gram, I want to use 500 gram of palm kernel oil as you can see i'll just write into this empty field before the palm kernel before the palm kernel 500 okay before the palm kernel oil there's there's an empty field i just i just type in 500 now i'm going to use 300 gram of palm oil okay and i want to use um 200 gram of olive oil let me look for olive oil All right, this is olive oil here. Let me type in 200 gram. 
200. I told you that I want to use a total of 1000 gram of oil, but out of which 500 gram palm kernel oil, 300 gram palm oil, and 200 gram olive oil. So I have a total of 300 plus 500 plus 200, that's 1000 gram of oil. I'm using 1000 gram of oil. So this is how to get your data into your light calculator. Let's move on now. Let's go down. Now that I've inserted all this data, let me go down. Now, when you go down, the lie calculator is telling you calculate lie or clear form. If I click on this clear form, it's going to empty all this data I've entered here. Okay. Maybe I noticed that I didn't enter the writing. I can just click on clear. Then it's going to empty them and I start all over again. If I click on calculate lie, then it's going to bring me to this page that will show me detail of the quantity of materials that I need based on what I have inserted in the lie calculator. Okay, this is the final page. So let's start from here now. For the size of the fat batch that you are using, we recommend that you use approximately 250 to 375 milliliter of liquid. All right, the light calculator is telling me to choose my water. The water that I'm going to dissolve my caustic soda is going to be in between 250 to 375 milliliters of liquid for me to get a good quality soap. My water range has to be between 250 and 375 milliliters. Now, let me let you know that um, one liter of water is equal to one gram. So this is like telling me between 250 gram and 375 gram of water. Okay, this is telling me. So the range, it, it, it's not giving you a specific amount here, but this is the range that will make your soap a good soap. So you're going to choose between 250 gram and 375 gram of water. Okay, now let's move to this section here. Let's move to this section here. That says, um, as you can see, this is a proof olive oil. I, 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 I typed in 200 and I have the 200 here. Palm oil, I have 500. And palm, sorry, palm kernel oil, I have 500. And palm oil, I have 300. The total weight of uh, oil I'm going to use is 1000 gram. Okay, as you can see, 1000. Now let's try to, let's go for that to understand what is um, meant by this percentage excess fat and lie amount uh, in grams, of course in grams, like we chose grams. All right, here we're talking about percentage excess fat. I told you earlier that excess fat, that is the super fat that is left in the soap as a result of excess oil that is left. I told you that if the oil is too much, it's going to make your soap very soft. So it you have to maintain a range. So the light calculator here is going to give us a range that we need. All right. Now, if we should maintain zero excess fat, zero excess fat, if you want to maintain zero excess fat, then your, your like amount, that is your caustic soda amount should be 154.33 gram. Now, this is very important. Pay attention to this place. If you want to maintain zero excess fat, you don't want any oil to be left behind in your soap recipe, then the light calculator is telling you to measure 154.33 gram of lye, of caustic soda. Okay? Now, if you want your excess fats, that's your super fats, to be 1% in excess, 1%, then you measure 152.79 gram of caustic soda. If you want 2%, you measure 151.24. If you want it 3%, you measure 149.70. If you want it 4%, you measure 148.16. All right, but then let me go for that to explain. You will notice that in this, in this section here, um, you will notice that there are two colors you have one in red, is it red? Yes, red. And the other one in, in light green, okay? Light green, gray color, kind of. 
Now at the bottom here, you will notice that there's a caution given to you. It says that zero to four percent excess of fat range proceed with caution. We do not recommend the, this unless actual saponification value are known and used. So what they're telling you that the excess fat, what they're simply saying here is that the excess fat between zero and four is not actually recommended. So they are recommending between five to nine. They are recommending between five to nine. So if you want to even go with excess fat, it's advisable for you to go between five and nine. That's what they're saying here. Okay. So this is how to use your, the, the light calculator. So what they're simply saying here is that even if you want to allow some excess oil in your um, recipe, and it's not advisable to go between zero and four. Okay, between zero and four. Neglect the zero and four. Choose a range between five and nine. The most ideal range is five and nine. So that's how to use the lie calculator. So basically that is how to use the lie calculator. It's going to give you the specific amount of oil that you need and the specific amount of caustic soda that will give you a good quality soap. So thank you very much for watching and God bless you. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can visit our website on www.sunshineresources.org.ng or visit our YouTube channel on youtube.com forward slash c forward slash sunshine resources SRTV. Thank you very much for watching and God bless you.